Week six of the fourth season of Play More is finally here, and this week we're taking on the Entei Empire, coached by E-Man Lionheart. After last week's loss, I was worried it would hurt us a little bit more in the standings, but Tyler, we're kind of sitting pretty right now. Yeah, as much as I hate to see that L1 in the street column, we're at the top of this big group that's three and two, and it's because it was a narrow loss. The differential's still looking great. And because of that, as we hit the back stretch of the season, the goal now, John, is to just rack up some wins, which might be tough this week, considering all the legendaries the opponent has. You're not wrong, Tyler. Our opponent hasn't had the greatest season, but with this collection of Pokemon, they can turn it around at any point. I'm looking at the two Terra Captains. Terrakion is a Pokemon. I know it's not as good anymore in Draft League, but I loved using it when I had a chance to. But Brute Bonnet could definitely stop a few of our threats in their tracks. And speaking of that, What's Ben bringing this week? Well, I'll tell you what I'm looking at. As you see our team on the screen, I'm staring down a certain big fish, the Gyarados, that hasn't been on the team since that m &J TV guy. He was here, and we lost, and it was all terrible, and everybody hated it. But ever since then, we haven't seen big fish. He's back. Ben told us to expect some big things from him. That, that, was, that was pretty good, I know. But if you want to know why that is, why we're bringing the team we are, the extended team builder is linked in the description. Go watch that. And now it's time to see what the opponent's bringing. Okay, Tyler, it's time to see that our coach is on a workout machine. <laughs> I don't know if I care about the team right now. Tyler, what is going on with our coach? I don't know, but I love every single bit of it. And, and I do know if, if this battle goes... As planned, um, he's going to have to do this for every battle for the rest of the season. He absolutely is. He looks incredible. I mean, that is, I, well, a stallion up there. But uh, no, Terrakion is interesting. Definitely means Brute Bonnet is going to be the Terra Captain. We should probably note that at least. B but as I stare at the coach, I see something behind him. And that is a Bubby from the Play Dash More store, the sponsor of all of these videos. Unfortunately, Bubby is sold out and the limited edition one is gone from the store, but we do still have some incredible merch lying around. There will be some restocks in the future. There will be some new merch in the future. But if you want to support the team and you missed out on the plushies, consider a shirt, consider a sweatshirt. But now let's get into the battle. All right, we know that we're starting the battle with our best cheeks forward, but <laughs> is it going to be the Diancy that we expect from the other side? It is not at Ooh. all. We got a thumbs down from the coach immediately. But we've got a Beneral in motion. It's not what he expected. It's not what we expected. But I think what he's thinking here is mm. if you're moving, you know, it gets the blood flowing, more airflow. I think that just sends his IQ up at least five or ten points. That brain is working right now. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fantastic commentary, Tyler. I think you're really onto something. <laughs> something we did not actually mention because we were so focused on everything going on with the Benroll. There is no uh, old Bubby. We don't see the Cyclozar. So that yeah. should mean there is no hazard removal. That's why we're seeing the spikes right away. Our team is a little bit more hyper offensive plus Clefable. Uh, so you get spikes up, they should stick around. And I wouldn't be shocked if the opponent over predicted here, because why would we leave in the cheeks? You can't just leave your cheeks out in the open, Tyler. That, I think that actually is against the law. Well, and that's why I'm a little confused by them not bringing out Dancy at the start. Mm. It, it seems very simple. Maybe it's an overcalculation of knowing that Sandy Cheeks is probably what we're bringing out. And it's not the best matchup for them with yeah. Dancy out there, but if I'm them, I'm, I'm putting out the Stealth Rocker, which was we, what we assume the NC's out there for. Maybe it's it's built differently. Yeah. We know what this thing is here for. It, yep. It's just for that Flame Orb. It's just for Guts, and it's to do a ton of damage. But to start mm. the battle, you're going to take the trade off of that and get the rocks up. Yeah, and that also means this thing doesn't have Bulletproof, which is really, really good for uh, the Breloom, because it's Choice Banded in. We're gonna be able to go for Bullets, so we don't have to worry about that. I was correct that they could over predict in this first turn, uh, you know, trying to catch something on the switch. And now we're able just to get some really big damage on this thing. We got a layer of spikes up. This thing's not gonna be around as long. And I, I really, really like this beginning. Obviously we lose the cheeks, but that's good. We needed the coach to cover up. A little modesty can go a long way. And uh, Ursaluna at plus one, Tyler, uh, that's that's a base 50 speed bear. It's not going to be outspeeding our speediest mods. It, it's confusing 
to see it set up that way because mm. almost everything I've seen from my, my mentor, Wolfie VTC, <laughs> is that this thing is exclusively when it comes to speed, you're just using it with Trick Room. Yep. And immediately, Ben is going to bring something in that threatens to get it out. So if the goal there on the opponent's side was just pick up the kill, move on, makes sense there. Mm. Um, from a setup standpoint, y you're either giving up this super powerful mom, which I know you don't want to if you're on the other side, yep. or you're switching into probably here the DNC for the sake of not taking much from this hit. Anything else is is probably getting smacked but yeah. pretty hard. Well, and I, I assume the opponent was predicting a, a bulky Intimidate Gyarados to switch in for both of those plays, and that's why we saw the Facade and the Trailblaze. My bad, Facade. We saw those two moves. Um, at this point, you know, it works out pretty well for us. Spikes are up. When they switch that Ursula back in, you know, Spikes plus the, the Flame Orb, that's really going to whittle that thing down. And that is quite a specially defensive Diancy. We got to switch immediately. That that definitely gives us a little information there. Uh, that thing did not mind taking that. But also, Tyler, that thing is not going to be able to do too much to Blossom the dog, our friend, our pal. Yeah, Diancy is a Pokemon that admittedly I don't know too much about. I don't feel like people know much about this thing. Yeah. A, because you really couldn't get it, but B, like competitively, it hasn't had too big of an impact. But it's a really cool one because you can use it in a lot of different ways with it as bulky as it is. Yeah. Like, it, you can turn it into, especially when you know Darkrai is going to be so strong on our side of things. Mm -hmm. You could have this thing body pressing <laughs> with that high defense stat. I'm interested to see on the other side because the number one thing that we were thinking with it was the Stealth Rocks. Is that what they go for here, knowing that we were more than likely going to switch? Or do they come out here with a special attacking move? Mm. You never really know exactly what that build is going to look like offensively mm. outside of the fact that there's going to be investment into the defense because it's hard to take that thing out. Yeah, it... <sighs> It's interesting to see the flash cannon. I don't really know what they were predicting. We're not going to switch Clefable in on it. Um, I assume that's why they did that. I mean, maybe they still have too many mm -hmm. offensive moves. I don't really care to try to get in their head with that play because I'm sure they had a reason for it, but it doesn't matter at this point. They have to switch out. That's fantastic for us. We have the two layers of sp or well, we have a layer of spikes up, I should say. Uh, and as they switch in this, assuming, uh, you know, to predict the body press, we get a free howl up. And now we're in a very, very, very advantageous position, Tyler, because we do have crunch on this thing. Yeah, the, the only thing that Ben was worried about, particularly slowing Zama down, yeah. was the situation with the Goldango and a Thunder Wave. And we saw last week in what, in theory, would not have been a super costly paralysis until a full paralysis cost us a move that potentially cost us the battle, just how bad that can be. And now we have that set up, but Ben does not seem too phased by it in this case. Yeah, I'm not phased by it either because we do have Healing Wish on Clefable. Now, I ideally, we don't have to use Healing Wish. You know, we've talked about Differential a lot this season, um, but we do have a way to get rid of this paralysis. So if we can stay in plus one, ideally not get paralyzed here and get a strong crunch off on anything that Switch is in or take this thing out, that'd be fantastic. I love the Heavy Slam prediction. You know, if this thing stays in with that defense drop, we should probably be able to kill. And if they switch into Diancy, we can just wipe our hands clean of that menace. And uh, we're going to be in a good spot for Darkrai to clean up. We'll have multiple options to clean up, you know. It it's looking really, really good here. Unfortunately, you are correct. I think uh, us getting paralyzed could really change the tides of the battle here. So I think you're a little bit of a bad man for bringing well, that up. But but I, I think the good news of it, A, just by Ben's reaction, he wasn't too flustered by it. But B, I, I think if it was a huge deal, he would have switched out knowing that, that that's the move. Yeah. And, and we've got Pokemon. One thing that Ben will do for us is coming into a battle, say, if we're in a spot where somebody's got to go, here are the Pokemon that we're most likely to just let go down. If he was really worried about the paralysis there, he would have swapped one in, let him take the paralysis. Why? Now I think he's regretting that decision, at least for the moment, because that, that that's two straight battles. And again, I like to emphasize this. If there's a team in this league it's going to happen to, if there's a team in this universe that's going to happen to, it's this one. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think he can regret it, because we lost last week because of Hurricane. And that's fair. You bring Hurricane, it can miss. That's up to you, or that's on you. We cannot lose this battle getting paralyzed and getting hit with Focus Blast! That Man, why have, we, why have we stopped cycling? Like, I... Because uh, he, he's angry, and he should be angry, because it's like... This is ridiculous! This is ridiculous! But I can't hit a Focus Blast. 
or freaking hurricane. You had two focus blasts and I get full parry. Two weeks? Uh, okay, I... <sighs> we lose off of the 30% miss in one week. The next week we get paralyzed and then get hit with two 70% accurate moves. Really putting us in a devastating spot. And at this point, that's just part of Pokemon Tyler. I played a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of competitive Pokemon, and you do just have to accept that this is part of the game. But usually, yeah, like in a situation like that, it's not the 30% is not gonna bite you both ways. And the fact that they were able to do it twice plus the paralysis, it there's not many situations with how well this battle has gone that they could drag themselves back into it with this quickly without something like that happening. It's a little worrying, Tyler. And uh, I'm, uh, I, the professionalism is gone. I'm pretty upset. <laughs> uh, to me, the, the only <laughs> redeeming factor, and it goes back to what I mentioned earlier, uh, with what stood out to me about the team build, and that's Gyarados being brought. We obviously still have Darkrai. This is not a team where if one Pokemon goes down, our opportunity to win is out the window. Unfortunately, this week, we've got multiple builds that can win this thing. Yeah. That hurts, though. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm, I'm stinging. I'm sad. I'm not happy. I might file a complaint. If this doesn't kill, I'm throwing this controller that way. Um, especially because, like, a, a certain someone has been suspended this season for nefarious things, and we're just going to let that go? We're not going to look into that. Oh, look at that, coach. That was impressive. Okay. He's bringing me back. I, I The thing that's really frustrating, if this play goes our way, it, this has been a pretty one-sided battle so far. Uh, I'm pretty sure this should kill based off of what we saw before. Oh, he's going to throw the controller. He was close. <laughs> and it, you know what? <sighs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh, <laughs> uh, it. I. I'm a. I'm. I. I. I needed Snorlax. I. I can't do this alone. Even the best plan can go awry with something like this. And you know what? They clearly had the, you know, the build to be able to live the side shock. That's good prep on our opponent's parts. Even with the damage done there, we still have the ability to healing wish into the dark rye and bring it back from the depths. But getting that toxic chain, it's just another thing that has gone their way and put us behind the sticks. Now, Ben is going to go for the dragon dance. They're going to go for an attacking move. They will poison us. And I'm going to take something to throw it through a wall. And then when I realize, oh, no, I own this place. That was a horrible decision. Why did I do that? Uh, you're gonna have to take over as I really deal with the uh, the fallout of my own actions. I would highly suggest, um, and I've, I've only learned this just now, uh -huh. get, getting getting a, a big Snorlax plush. It's it's really bringing me comfort in this moment. Yeah, but our coach had his controller and he was gonna throw it at the wall. So, but now I have the. Co it happened, Tyler. I'm gonna I, throw the controller. I'm gonna throw it at the wall. It's gonna go through the wall, Tyler. I almost dropped Snorlax, but I. I I didn't, and I'm afraid if I did, <laughs> of how powerful of an earthquake would have followed. <laughs> um. Okay, so if we just didn't get paralyzed, if it didn't get poisoned, I don't know. No, no, if we just didn't get paralyzed in the beginning, and we get rid of that, po I mean, every oh my. Oh, that one's really upsetting me. <laughs> beak, 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 beak fish. Beak fish. I need you to hear me loud and clear. This is not because I have money riding on this. It might be. Wait. <laughs> I need you to decimate this monstrosity. So Okay, never mind. I need Bubby to just not die. Bubby, well, don't, but don't die. Bubby, don't and die. And this is where the battle has really gone astray. And I... There is nothing our coach can do at this point that would leave me remotely disappointed in them. 
Brute Bonnet, or as I, I'm not, I, I don't have enough whimsy left in me to say it in a fun way. Brute Bonnet is the one Pokemon that could have been brought with Terra Electric that could stop the Gyarados from winning. And that was okay, because we had ways to get rid of it, or we had, you know, Blossom, we had Darkrai, other things that could really, you know, take over. But with all of the things that have gone awry, including our setup Pokemon getting poisoned through Toxic Chain, they now have this Pokemon ready to go, and our ability to take it out, it, it's, it's just few and far between, you know? It's gonna really come down at this point to the the choice banded Bubby just doing a thing. So making this play, it was the only play that Ben could really make. It was a really good play. We need to find a way to get rid of this Pokemon. I'm not sure if Ben's gonna be able to do it with everything that's happened in this battle, which is really unfortunate. Bullet Seed really is the only play. And if we look at all of the Pokemon brought, I mean, it's gonna come down to the, the Calc versus the Latios. But even then, Latios is going to be able to outspeed, you know, with what has happened, us not being able to get rid of any of these Pokemon, you know, with that paralysis, it, it's it's really just created this this chain reaction, you know, uh, unintended, oh uh, yay, where I, I, I don't know if we can really win. I think the best way to win at this point is finding a way to Healing Wish into the Gyarados and getting uh, the Brute Bonnet down to a point where we can take it out. And I just do not know if we have that ability. There is still a potential our coach can outplay the pants off of the opponent. We've already talked about having uh, cheeks out in public. That is a crime. So I think they'd get taken away. They'd, they'd forfeit the match. Uh, and it starts there, Tyler. It starts with that good prediction. Maybe that's what we're missing. Pants? I flipped the Snorlax upside down. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm wearing pants, um, Tyler. What about you? No, the... I don't know if this is going to help. I'm highly disturbed. I'm going back to right side up. Okay. 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 Um. Yeah. It. I. I we haven't had many battles like this. It's really well, hard the, to the come back. The biggest thing in, in going through everything that Ben gave us, I think the toughest part for us right now commentating this. Yeah. Is everything you you mentioned of the wind conditions that we've talked about. Everything that that us as an organization we've heard from Ben coming into this battle. It's tough to even find a way to get to those because usually you can hang on to, okay, no matter what, we can hold on to our win con and get there. Realistically here, technically, it's on the table because to, to clear get the, the runway for Gyarados, which is, is going to be hard, there are still two things that we really need to get rid of with the Laddie and then the Brew Bonnet. In theory, those things are possible. They are not likely. They are theoretically possible, yeah. which means there's a chance. Now, I think on the other side of it, if you're Ben, mentally you have to start thinking about is the goal to win or is the goal to get out of this like it was last week with the best differential possible when the standings are as close as they are. Because if you're playing purely to win, there's going to be some more risk in that that could result in you not getting one more kill. Yeah. And it's really hard in a spot like this to balance those things at a battle. That's This is where I like to go to the mental because it's already been so frustrating. There's so much stuff that's been out of your control. You feel like five moves in, this battle was not in the bag, but it was all going exactly like you would have wanted it to. It's all flipped on its head. How do you rebound? What does the rest of this battle look like? In Ben's mind, what is the goal of the rest of this battle? Is it to win or is it just to salvage? And I think it has to actually be win because I do not know if you can salvage without winning. You know, <laughs> as odd as that may sound, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that. And at this point, our opponent, because they have so many Pokemon left with how things went, they're able to bring this in as a sacrificial Pokemon. But now that it's in as a sacrificial Pokemon, we did not have... I don't even know if Moonblast would have been able to kill. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been able to. We're in a tough spot, you know? Um, Healing Wish is probably the best thing that really can be done, unfortunately, as we need to... You know, again, it's 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 what I just. Whoo, that's something. That is something. At least it's 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 not it's not a lot of something, but it's something. The only way we're gonna be able to salvage is try to win. Unfortunately, so we are either going to win or we're gonna lose like 4-0, which is everything you just laid out. It lets lets me know that that is bad, Tyler. That that is bad. You know, I, I'm gonna say something really bold. Uh huh. We're we're gonna win or we're gonna lose trying. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, we're that's we're we're gonna we're gonna do the thing now. The nice thing with Gyarados, if we get one kill, we do get a Moxie boost. 
this play is so important. And this is where the opponent is really going to show like how much they've earned this battle. A win is a win. You go for Thunder Wave, you get the Paralysis. Hell yeah. You go for the Focus Blast, you hit it twice. <laughs> a double hell yeah. This play right here is so important for them to nail. Ben doesn't have many choices here. It's really going to come down to the opponents. I, I think if I were Ben, I would be leaning more of the top of the head mm -hmm. towards the screen to distract them. I like, like that. Like, like a full moon or, or okay. kind of like the, the light coming off a window. Okay, and what do they bring in here? Storm. Hmm, interesting. Um, what? does Latios have? Now, this was something that we were pretty unsure of coming into this battle, what Latios would be. We've seen flip turn. Now, this could be like trick choice Maybe. scarf, possibly. And if they trick choice scarf and we dragon dance, that would be... It, it, it makes me feel good that we've even re reached a point where the coach feels like he needs to run a, a calc is doing some kind of research. That makes me feel good because that means there's hope. Yeah, Trick Choice Scarf would, I think, just end the game with the wrong move being picked. Now, um, if we can get a kill with the Moxie, with Waterfall, I mean, that, that could change things. They do Trick, but... That, I, it, that's I, the tough part with Latios. I mean, Ben, in his notes for us, it, it just says Latios can be anything. Yeah, and it really can. And that is true. <laughs> Okay, this is this is this is really big. I I'm not letting myself get excited or hopeful. I I mean, our coach has done everything in his power to get back into this battle. I I I'm 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 I'm, uh, I'm uh, okay. 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 There we go. There we go, Tyler. That is really huge. That's a Moxie boost. We get rid of the Latios. And now the question really becomes Pheasantipity, I'm pretty sure. I mean, with the speed. Now, Brute Bonnet, would we be able to kill at plus one? I'm not entirely sure. But we can kill Ursaluna easily. Diancie, I'm not really too worried about. It comes down to Brute Bonnet and Pheasantipity. There is a chance. There's a real chance here, Tyler. We got another kill. That's huge. Um, the, the my bubby is upsetting me a lot more than it would if uh, this battle went a different way. <laughs> Gyarados, I asked one thing of you. God, what is waterfall Could chance of flip? I'm I'm just looking this up so I can get angrier, and that's not good. Everyone listening, don't do things like this. It's not good. He clicked. I had twenty percent chance to flinch. No, oh. that's good prep. That's good prep. Doesn't really matter. We're not going to get the flinch. Good prep on their side. I, I actually really do like that prep from them. Um, yeah. I mean, I think regardless, Pheasantipity outspeeds us. But if we get a flinch here, um, we could do it. Now, he may be wanting to go for the Dragon Dance just because it's like the only way we could win because Pheasant yeah. Dippity would outspeed us. So I do I do understand the reason of doing that at this point. There is definitely a chance they, they could make a switch here and really, like we could catch them slipping a little bit and possibly guarantee ourselves a win. I assume that's, yeah, it's not going to work, which unfortunate. Maybe, maybe they go for Screech here. No, it's no screech, no screech. It's a, uh, it's, it's a tough one. Um, the last season we had, we started so hot and then we had quite a slide and this season is, is starting to go that way. But at this point, I, I just, I don't really see any fault with our coach and that's really difficult. You know, you really want to point to something after a loss. And you know the 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 opponent played great. Like the the luck helped them, and then they capitalized on it, and they had what they needed to have to stop Gyarados from sweeping. I don't know. The rest of their team could be great, could be bad. I don't know. They had what they needed to win here. 
but I I feel really confident what the coach brought, and if we battle again, I'd feel confident in those chances. When coming into these final weeks of the season, I also feel confident in the coach. It's a difficult feeling right here, but honestly, I I feel really I I feel for Ben. This is this was kind of devastating to watch. I feel for the fans, but I feel very confident moving these last weeks of the season that we are going to see this prep and play continue, and hopefully the the luck turns a little bit. And we're going to be able to hear more from the coach in our next press conference. Please leave some comments down below. Leave some questions. Leave some positivity. We're going to go into that press conference. We're going to talk. We're going to turn things around. That's the next battle or the next video you should click over here. But after that press conference, we're going into week seven with a vengeance. And I feel bad for whoever our opponent is. Things are going to change.